Okay, friends, welcome back to another episode. Today we have L Magazine, October of 2022, and the cover is Giselle. So let's get started. Okay, what I neglected to tell you that we've seen this image before, but what I neglected to tell you was in the background is Claude Monet's Water Lilies. And I believe this is the one at MoMA. I could be wrong, but it looks like it looks like MoMA. But it's for sure it's Monet's Water Lilies. It was a variation on a theme, so it's kind of like uh, uh, Van Gogh's uh, bedroom at Alver, right? There were three, so right. So he had a lot. Van Gogh had a lot of uh, variations on themes too. Okay, we saw this one already. Okay, this I had to laugh when they did. This is the law of unintended consequences, because here <laughs> I'm actually laughing. And look at this woman, she looks like a vampire, right? With the slick back hair, right? She kind of has some Eastern European features and it takes on the appearance of a cape. So you can just, you can just picture her saying, I want to bite your neck. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. See, this is how, this is what, see, right? This is nowhere near as drastic, but the way this was just caught, right? I mean, this is like Christopher Lee, 1960s Dracula movie. And the arm is beautiful shot, absolutely beautiful. But what they've done again, right? In in post, they've come, they've came, they went in here and chopped the top of her head off. I, I'm just not understanding that. This is one of the Baldwins, right? Haley is one of the Alec Baldwin and Stephen and Billy. She's the daughter of one of the Baldwins and she married Justin Bieber. So now she's known as Haley Bieber. But it's a nice shot in Saint Laurent. We know we talk about, you know, these advertisers, they go through these periods. It's kind of like, like a sine wave, right? Where it's crest trough, crest trough. But, but I mean by that, it's good photography, good designs, horrible photography, horrible designs. And they, they ride these, it's really cyclical in some of these companies. And Saint Laurent and, and Valentino come to mind. These are companies who are really bad at this cyclical nature of advertising, right? Whereas like um, Ralph Lauren is always just wonderful and there are companies that are always bad there are companies that are always good but Saint Laurent is this sine wave where they go through these cycles and here they're I've seen them lately they're in a cycle of good good creativity good designs good photography now here this is see there have been charges over the years of racism in the fashion industry and I just cannot believe Prada right so let's say Prada they contract this out to an advertising advertising agency, right? So they have an advertising agency do these shoots, whether it's chosen directly by Prada or through the advertising agency, it doesn't matter. But my point is, look at what they've done here to this woman of color. They've put these gorilla, now this is clearly supposed to be gorilla hair on a black woman, right? That's about as racist as you can get. And I'm sure this model was very uncomfortable putting this on for the shoot but you know she's she might have a family to support right she has bills to pay like we all do so she probably thought you know I am not cool with this at all but you know my, my light bill is due or whatever right I mean, she's just human but look what they've done to her put these gorilla accessories on her that is absolutely racist and Prada should be absolutely ashamed of itself for doing that okay we have Dolce & Gabbana Dolce & Gabbana always shoot on location in Italy and here we have this is Vienna this is Piazza San Marco or St. Mark's Plaza like an English translation but it's it's Venice and it's beautiful look at that location can you imagine 
being a photographer and having the honor of shooting not only in Italy, but at Piazza San Marco. Wow, that's the dream of a lifetime to be able to shoot there. And not only that, to shoot Sharon Stone. What an honor. Okay, Giorgio Armani, they've been absent for a long time in the magazines. They've been gone a long time, so it's reappearing here. And it's okay. It's nothing fantastic, yet it's it's not garbage either. I would say this is, on a scale of 1 to 10, this is probably a 6 or 7, so, right? Not bad. Okay, so I've done some research on this. If you remember in a previous episode, I said that the... Right, they've elongated her body here, either with a wide angle or using puppet warp in Photoshop or a combination of both. And I did some homework here, so I measured a human body. A human body should be seven and a half times the length of the head, the height of the head, including the head. So the ratio is 7.5 to 1, right? And I've done some research. And when artists, artists used to paint kings and queens, monarchs, nobility, they would they would make the ratio 8 to 1. So it wasn't a lot, but they increased the length from 7.5 to 1 to 8 to 1 to make it more regal. And the, the, the ratio lengthens to 8.5 to 1 for God. So if somebody wanted to portray a God... The body would be eight and a half times the height of the head. So we have seven and a half, which is normal, eight for monarchs, and eight and a half for gods. I measured this. The ratio is 8.3. So they've gone into puppet warp, and they have literally, not figuratively, she's now between a monarch and a god at 8.3. So this is just stupid. I mean, she's, she's a good-looking model. She's a wonderful model. But really, you're going to take her from 7.5 to 1 to 8.3 to 1 and turn her into a god? That's just stupid. Stupid. Okay, so we have Zoe Kravitz here, and she's a lot like Miley. She's done a lot of these small tattoos all over her body, and it just has a very dirty, unclean appearance, right? So that's why I always advise young women if they're if if they're thinking about becoming a model please never tattoo your body because that's right you're gonna be denied work you know she's a celebrity and Miley's a celebrity but I mean a girl going to a modeling agency or trying to get work as a model they might be shut out with these tattoos and again it's just it's just dirty it doesn't look clean okay Cartier here still tone deaf after all these years still running this Right, this kind of, you know, it's a very mild Nazi theme, right? It's, they're still running it, which is, to me, unbelievable. This really works. I like this image on the left. She's got a, just a very natural, clean appearance, right? And right, she's not hardly wearing any makeup at all. And she looks fantastic, so, good job. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. I think it's Piaget. Not really sure, but anyways, it looks good. Okay, so this is kind of cool. This is one of the uh, first, I'm gonna do like a forensics, right? Forensics on these photos. So this here has the telltale sign of either an indie filter, right? Kind of this dark appearance, and you can tell how dark this is. So this is either they've choked out too much light with an indie filter, or if this this is usually EV15, an outdoor scene like this by a swimming pool with some concrete. You're looking at about EV15. And what the photographer has done, the photographer, and a, a way to make this sky real dark. Camilla Ockrens does this in some of her work. You set the strobe for one stop hotter than ambient light. So you set the strobe at EV16. Right, and then you set your camera at EV16. So what happens is the the model appears correctly exposed, but you take everything else in the background and you make it really dark. Right, you can tell this. So either this is an indie filter and it's choked out a little bit too much light, or they've you have EV15 
and they've set the strobe and the camera to sync with each other at EV16 and it's taken the background really dark so if you're interested in achieving this effect that's how you do it and this is also by the way Kendall Jenner for Jimmy Choo okay this is nice we, are, we talk about gas a lot here right so this is beautiful if you notice this kind of desert sand and this all this brown and green right and you have some orange these are all related and the clothing is all brown and the desert sand brown now the only thing that's really not matching is this black back but we can give that a pass black is somewhat neutral but you see here how the the stylist whoever styled these models right and the photographer they chose a set or an outdoor location to match the clothing but here on the left they kind of botched it a little bit because it's still kind of this villa or wherever they are and they wanted to go with blues which are it's not an earth tone, right? Blue is not an earth tone. So what they did is they said, oh my gosh, we got to find some blue to tie this in because the blue in these browns are not a green. So they found this one little area of this villa or hotel or whatever it is that's got some blue tile. And they thought, well, we're going to tie this together. We're going to make this work. But it really doesn't. So these blues... It does match the tile, but it really doesn't match with the overall browns of the location. So, I mean, I give them credit for attempting to tie in these blues, but they should have just omitted these outfits altogether and said, nope, it's not a good match. Let's just do away with the blues. We'll go with some browns, go with some earth tones to try to blend this in. So they made a mistake by trying to force that, right? They tried to force a square peg into a round hole. And it didn't work. These are beautiful. Right? The models are absolutely top shelf. As I've always said about Paul Marciano and Gas. Top of the line models. And you can tell the earth tones. Like the browns. Right? All these colors. The wicker chair. There's this tile. The background. All these are green. All these colors are in agreement. So excellent job. This is excellent, and this one here is, I think they should have rethought that, maybe not included it in the publication. Okay, this here is kind of a faux pas, too, because right, when you go to the beach, if you take a bag, you generally take a cotton bag, right? Something that if it gets wet, it can just air dry. Now, if they wanted to shoot this, they shouldn't have chosen a beach location. If they wanted to shoot this leather bag, Shoot it in Midtown Manhattan. Kind of treat it like a, a business case or a carry-all. It doesn't have to be for business. But my point is this bag would have been much more at home being shot in Midtown Manhattan than on a beach. Because again, you're going to take a cotton. You're going to take something you don't mind getting wet. If it gets wet, it's not a big deal. Getting this wet, that's a big deal. Okay, here... This is cool. This is like a display, almost like in a museum or something. And they've got all this shag, this kind of pink, pinkish shag, which is really working. But this right here, this I told them, right now, I've said this before. If there's one thing they screw up, these stylists, you know, the fashion editors or stylists, whichever you want to call it, the, the people who are in charge of dressing the model. You can sometimes call them fashion editor or you can call them a stylist. So whoever styled this model, whoever chose to shoe, this is ridiculous. This is horrible. And they do this a lot. They, they use these ridiculous shoes, and I don't understand why. So here, this looks like another Venice scene, Venice, Italy, right? Banana Republic. But the thing here, they've done the same thing. This black does not look right amongst all this brown. So I'm sure that I, I would think they make some clothing and brown leather right not only just black but brown so what they should have done the stylist should have put this model in brown leather and it would have it would have agreed much more right in this setting so i think it was a mistake choosing the black leather here i included this only bianca jagger only because of studio 54 i'm just fascinated with studio 54 i don't know like 
what I do sometimes is I go down these rabbit holes, right? Like I spent months, literally months, researching Studio 54, and I learned as much as I could about it. I did the same with the Chelsea Hotel in uh, New York. And there are different subjects, and I'm sure you do this too. I think we're all prone to it, right? It's somehow it you attach yourself to it and you go down this rabbit hole and it just keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper so anyway if you ever if you're ever up to it i really suggest you do some research on studio 54 and the history of studio 54 all the right all the people who made it what it was and i think it would be a worthwhile endeavor for you okay this is really creative here number one it's a beautiful shot okay but if you can tell, the design is like a jacket. It's a skirt. But these are, you can call them epaulets or epaulets. There are two pronunciations for that. This would be like the neck, right? If you wanted to cinch the neck, keep the wind out if you're on a motorcycle. And this is the zipper. This is the zipper of the jacket. But again, this is a skirt that's been fashioned like a motorcycle jacket. And I thought that was really outstanding, really creative. Okay, here we have Jenna Ortega from the Netflix show Wednesday. And she looks wonderful. They're shooting her through a gel. It looks like a reddish, reddish pinkish gel, reddish more so. Right, but she's being shot through a gel. Nice photo. This photo is wonderful. It reminds me of, I think it was a Jennifer Beals and Flash Dance, I think 1983. But she's kind of channeling, I think, Jennifer Beals there from Flash Dance. But anyway. Beautiful shot, beautiful choice of paper. Everything is in agreement. Wonderful photo. Okay, we covered this before, I think, in the, this kind of Terry Richardson-esque photo, right? It's about two-thirds of a stop hot, overexposed, right? Mixed feelings on that. This is, I thought this photographer was dead. Sebastian Sodalgo. Salgado, excuse me, I mispronounced his last name. Sebastio Salgado. But anyways, he's a wonderful photographer. And Ted Forbes from uh, Art of Photography, I think he did a... Ted, he's got a wonderful channel, Ted Forbes. But he, I think he did a standalone piece on Salgado. So I recommend you head over to Ted's channel later and check out Salgado. Anyways, he's a wonderful, excellent photographer. Okay, I think we might go over 30 minutes today. I'm just going to try to knock this out in one episode. So there, so here's the shoot with uh, Giselle. And it's shot by Inez and Venude. It's a couple out of Amsterdam, man and a woman. And they've been shooting since about 86. And they have a son together. So they're not only a photographic couple, but they're a romantic couple. Again, one man, one woman. And they've been around a long time, and their photography is excellent. So I am not talking bad about their photography at all. But the thing I have here, so the re what I want to invoke here is the concept of a safety coordinator on a shoot. Okay, so Vic Mauro was killed in 1982 on, on the set of Twilight Zone movie when a helicopter fell. And it, the rumor is, I don't know if it's true or not, but it decapitated him, but it surely killed him. Uh, you have Brandon Lee killed on a movie set, right? Um, John Eric Hexum was fooling around with a 44 Magnum blank, shot himself in the head, and it killed him. But he, he maybe he was under the impression it wouldn't do anything to him. And then recently, here we see on the sh on the set of Rust, we saw the uh, armorer who was too young to really be in that position, and the safety coordinator failed to check that gun. So. Alec Baldwin end up killing somebody on the set. So m the reason I'm, I'm setting this backstory up here is to show you the importance, even in photography, of having a safety coordinator on the set. So here you have a 60s or 1960s, 1970s Harley, and the kickstand was, right, was such that the bike had an extreme lean to it. Now, modern motorcycles don't lean so much. They're kind of, right, they kind of are upright, but just enough, right, that they can rest their weight on the kickstand. But back in these times, it was not really extreme lean. Plus, you're on this, right, this soil, this dirt, which isn't stable. So my point is, 
Okay, so in, in future images, you'll see here Giselle is riding the bike. But if this engine is hot and it toppled over on her, this could badly disfigure her, right? I mean, she makes her living as a model. And this bike, if the engine is hot, it's going to grossly disfigure her. Now, even if the engine is cold, say the bike hadn't been running, if this bike falls over onto her, that's going to break bone. That's going to cause a lot of damage. So my point is, Inez and Venude, when they shot this, they were reckless by putting her in this pose. They put her in danger, and they never should have done that. And, and my point, though, if there was a safety coordinator on this on this shoot they would say hey no absolutely not it's too dangerous right I, I understand where you're trying to go i understand you're trying to get creative but it's far too dangerous so that's the price of not having a safety coordinator on the set okay these are nice and again she makes her living as a model she's got bare legs here I would hope that somebody told her, don't come out of first gear, right? Keep the bike maybe between 7 and 12 miles an hour enough, enough velocity to keep the bike upright, but certainly don't go faster than 12 miles an hour and chance, you know, take a chance on dumping the bike and scarring your knees up. So, right, I would certainly hope that that was the case. Nice. This is cool, nice shot, kind of like that easy rider, like Peter Fonda and Jack Nicholson. Wonderful movie, but kind of, kind of has that throwback feel to it. Here, I like this shutter that they chose, because I told you this blur is so fashionable, but if you notice, she's really running. Okay, her hair is flying in the wind. She appears to be in a in a true run or a jog, so they've chosen a shutter of. 1 over 1,000 or 1 over 2,000 to freeze her motion, right? There's a little bit of blur in the boot. So maybe it was 1 one thousandth of a second. But you can tell they really froze her motion. And I really applaud that shutter choice because there's no stupid blur in this photo. They froze the motion. And you can see here, this is what I was talking about by this extreme lean. And they're in this dirt or sand which is right now you have two, uh, two uh, variables that are leading toward an accident. So you see this lean, if that kickstand were to give way, that bike is coming down on her. Okay, this is good, right? Nice, nice photo. Nice, it looks like she's really pushing that. You can tell kind of she's got a lot of weight on her back foot and it really does look like She's pushing the bike across this field. It doesn't look like she's faking it. It looks like she's really pushing it. And that leads to the authenticity of the photo, right? This is cool. Both of these photos really well executed. Nice. Okay, so that was Inez and, and Venud. Now here's Inez and Venud again. So I'm going to label this episode... Uh, like forensics, right? Forensics of photography, photo forensics. And I really want you to see this because this is really going to be cool. You don't see this often, right? So what we have here, the way this is set up, you can tell it's cloudy. I'm just guessing I'm ballparking this exposure to be about EV12, okay? So my point is a bright sunny day is usually EV15. So this is a full three stops. Uh, right below EV15. It's kind of ca overcast, right? It's kind of a muddy type, not muddy literally, but like a just a hazy, muddy uh, environment. So here, I think they were running late. Inez and Venude were running late for this shoot. Something happened, and they got delayed. They arrive at this location, and they're losing light. And I'll explain as I go along where I'm taking this. So this is late in the evening. They're at EV12. They set up the strobe, and they're getting tests. They're getting test shots. Okay, they're trying to dial in the strobe. They're hot here by about two thirds of a stop. And what's even worse, this is Rianne Van Rompuy, the Dutch model out of Amsterdam, and they're and coincidentally Inez and Venude are both Dutch out of Amsterdam. So, right, they got a little bit of uh, affinity with the with the model. But she's got this really white alabaster skin. 
Okay, so they're late. They arrive. They set up the strobe. Like they take a test shot, and it's too hot. This is about EV 12.7. I'm just ballparking. It's about two thirds of a stop, too overexposed, right? Okay, now let's turn the page and watch what happens. We'll go on. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Now here, they're, they're still adjusting the strobe, and I think all these photos are taken and, and taken in chronological order, and I'll explain why. So we have the first image. Okay, they're really not sure where they are on the stroke. They pop it and they're two-thirds of a stop hot. They take the next image. Okay, there's a wardrobe change, right? And they're still about a third of a stop overexposed here. So you have EV12 and the strobe is hitting her at about EV12.3 roughly, okay? So they're still losing daylight. This is evening and you'll see, you'll see what I mean as I go along. So here, Rian, she does another wardrobe change and they're still losing light okay she comes back out in a new wardrobe but since they've lost a little light and they might have tweaked the strobe a little bit now they're perfectly in balance the light is at EV12 and the strobe is hitting her at EV12 so there's a perfect match right EV12 EV12 so you have a balance in the strobe now dig this here's where it gets crazy now it's still these are in chronological order Okay, now, what happened is she went for another wardrobe change, okay? But, not to get too technical, but I think this is now, they've lost the light to the point where it's now, this is called civil twilight. And civil twilight is the point at which the sun goes below the horizon, it's after sunset, and it's between zero and six degrees on the horizon below. Okay, that's called civil twilight. And you can tell civil twilight because the sun's rays are coming from below the horizon and they're striking the clouds, the sun's rays. And it gives it this pinkish hue. That's how you know the sun is not coming from above. The sun is coming from below the horizon and hitting the clouds. Now dig it. So now they've gone from EV12, okay, EV12. The sun has set. Now they're at about EV11. And they didn't change the strobe, so now the strobe is hitting Rian, and it's hot. But maybe they tweaked a little. Maybe this is about 11, an EV 11.5, but the strobe is unchanged at EV 12, right? Because here we have EV 12, EV 12. She goes and changes her wardrobe, but they don't adjust the strobe. The sun went below the horizon. They left the strobe as it was, and now you see what happened. So you have EV 11.5. And the strobe is still hitting her at EV12, which is overexposed. So the moral of the story, what, where I was trying to go with this, is when they arrived on this set, okay, they were late. I guarantee it. They were running behind schedule. They were rushing to set up the equipment. They were going like mad trying to dial in the strobe. So this is really a test shot that should have never gone to print. This is a test shot that should have never gone to print. These two are accurate, they're balanced. EV12, 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 EV12. And this, okay, they missed it. It's not a test shot anymore, but they neglected to change the strobe setting with a change in the natural lighting condition. So, again, the moral of the story is arrive on time and never fight this light. You never want to shoot in the evening because this is what you'll be doing. You'll be chasing that strobe, constantly popping your light meter, right? Taking a light reading ambient, taking a light reading with the strobe popping and hitting your model, and you're going to be constantly trying to, trying to change the strobe setting to match ambient. And it's a fight not worth fighting. It's just... Oh, that's horrible. I've done it before, and it's just miserable. So the moral of the story, don't be late. Okay, this is Inez and Venute again. Same style as Alex White. But see here, they're in a studio. They don't have to fight ambient. They're, they're just using a strobe in a studio, right? Beautiful photo, beautiful photo. And I want you to see how good of a job she's doing as a model, right? Because she's... Right, you always want to create angles as a model, right? And here she's using her arm, right? And you can almost tell, right, the angle here. Let me get this piece of paper. 
the angle created here is kind of similar to this leg. So she's creating symmetry, right? She's creating agreement in the same here. Look at the angle in the bottom of the skirt and then in the top of the skirt, right? There's parallelism here. There's parallelism here. So she's doing a wonderful job as a model. And again, the way you get this is you take a ton of photos, right? Take 30 or 40 and you go through and this is what you're trying to find. You're trying to find these, this parallelism. Pop this 30 or 40 times, 50 times, have her do different posts. And right when you're done, you go in and look at all the images and you're looking for this parallelism. Both of these are wonderful. Excellent photography by Inez and Venud. And that does it. So, what, wow, how do you like that? 30 minutes. It turned out just right. Okay. So, I hope you enjoyed those, right? The Kindle Jenner at that swimming pool, right, with the ND filter, right? There's a little bit of forensics there trying to break down that image. And, and you know, it's technical aspects. And the same with Inez and Venud out there with Rian Van Rampe. And again, I, I'm going to say it again. I know I'm repeating myself badly. But you never, you never arrive late at near sunset because the, the, the light is changing so quickly. It's impossible to keep up with that light. It's really literally impossible because that light is changing so quickly. You just can't change the strobe fast enough to keep up with the lighting conditions. Okay, so And that's why you have to arrive on time to avoid that situation. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please give me a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.